Hi. Please introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Robert Day. I'm with the Arms Automotive Division. Um, and what I'd like to talk a little bit about today is a, an initiative called SOFI, which is really aimed at enabling the software-defined vehicle revolution that's coming. So what is a software-defined vehicle? So a software-defined vehicle is um, essentially the features and the functions of the vehicle, and often the differentiated features and functions, will now be driven by software. So it gives um, the opportunity to kind of design how a car is going to feel and how it's going to operate by software versus you know traditional hardware modules. So it allows the automakers to basically decide how to keep their car updated through software. Okay. What is Sophie? Aha. So Sophie stands for scalable open architecture for the embedded edge. So it's an initiative that we kicked off about 18 months ago, and it's really looking at how you can develop, efficiently develop software, and then deploy that in a vehicle. So what we did with Sophie is we, we looked at what other industries do agile development and deployment of, of large amounts of software. And so we found that the cloud and cloud development was a really good starting place for us because people do that every day. So you develop in the cloud and you basically deploy to a cloud instance. That's what cloud development's all about. In this case, instead of deploying to a cloud instance, we're going to deploy to a vehicle. So we're using these cloud standards, cloud tooling, but what we do is we actually look at how is a car different? How, how is the software in a car going to be different? A couple of, in, uh, of, of things are, one, it's real time. We need to worry about real time stuff. We need to worry about safety, which you don't have to worry about in a cloud instance. So, okay, how do we, what do we need to do to these standards or to these tools to make them work for a, a car? So you'll often hear the term data center on wheels for you know, the, the next generation of vehicles. The trouble is it's, it's not a data center on wheels. The compute might be similar to a data center, but the software that's going to be running and what that software needs to do is not going to be the same as a cloud instance. So that's why we came up with this initiative. Um, when we kicked it off, we wanted to make it an industry initiative. So we got um, a group of companies from both the automotive world but also from the software development world, because this is a software development thing. So the, the governing body members of SOFI are ourselves, uh, Cariad, VW, uh, Woven Planet Toyota, uh, Bosch, Continental, from the automotive industry. These are the companies that are going to be essentially adopting things that we put together as a SOFI architecture. But we also brought in people that understood cloud and software. So we also have Red Hat, Suze, and AWS as governing body members. So there's eight of us that are really kind of looking at to what does this need to look like to make it work for software defined vehicle. So it's quite, so a, the, quite a long answer, sorry. <laughs> when you talk about the AWS, Red Hat, all that, they do a lot of stuff in the cloud and now mm -hmm. they, they can, all their skills, they can put it towards cars. They understand development in the cloud, they understand software development, all we're saying is we need to look at it going into a vehicle than going into a cloud instance. And so they have that, that, those skills for the, the large amount of code, software code that's going to go into a vehicle, that, that sort of de development, that agile development. There, there's, a, there's a term we're using cloud CICD, which is continuous integration, con continuous delivery, because that's what they do. They keep integrating, integrating, and then they deliver, deliver. Our vehicle's going to be the same. When you buy a car, a software-defined vehicle, that vehicle will get updated. And when it gets updated, it's going to get better. So no longer when you drive your car off the dealership, you know, to get kind of worse over time, it's going to get better. It's like our cell phones, that we get new versions of operating systems, new tools, new applications, updates, upgrades. And it's not just the UI of the no. infotainment system. It's actually all the way down to the wheels. It's everything. Ev it's everything. And, and you know, the, the, the market is changing as we go into things like electrification, where people are just redesigning the vehicles um, to be EVs. So, 
you've got a clean slate, you can really look at all of the, you know, the, the, the functions, the electronics in the vehicle, and so you're almost starting from, from scratch, which is great. And so this initiative is really there to try and sh sort of like enable this and accelerate this. And behind you, are you showing a demo? Yeah, so let me explain this. So one of the things with Sophie is we wanted to have um, applications um, within Sophie to show the you know automotive developers how you would use Sophie to develop a particular application. So this is running um, something called AutoWare, which is an autonomous software stack. Okay, yeah. um, we're actually running it on this system here. Okay, and this is a system that we um, had a partner company, AD Link, develop, and it's called the Ava Developer Platform. So it's basically got a powerful ARM um, uh, processor in it. It's a 32-core ARM processor. Because we didn't know what people would want to develop using this. So we kind of over-provisioned it so that you could run any software-defined function, including an autonomous stack, which is what we're running here. So what this is really trying to do is to show how you could do your developments. Which, which uh, CPU is it there? So it's an Ampere Ultra 32 which is 32 core. And it's got a nice cooling. Oh, it's yeah, liquid cooled. It's got cooled. Uh, it's connected got... with GPUs. Yes, so this is running GPUs as well. So a lot of the um, a lot of the functions in, you know, these these high-end automotive systems like autonomy, um, you know, they, they, they don't just use CPUs, they use GPUs, they use accelerators. So this system's actually expandable. It's got three PCIe, so you can plug in graphics cards, whatever you want, networking. So it's, it's really quite a nice system to get started. Because as I say, we don't know what people are going to develop on it. We're hoping the whole car, the different parts of the car, and you know, part of the Sophie architecture is also looking at how you can have different applications running on the same system. So there's no reason why you couldn't have your ADAS system and your IVI system running on the same compute system if it was powerful enough. Uh what I'm looking at here is it to do with uh, self-driving and stuff yes. like that? Yes, yeah. so, so AutoWare is an autonomous self-driving stack. So this is just sort of showing a view of what, uh, what AutoWare sees. Obviously, we're not connected to a car, so we, we're showing an example of um, you know, one of the parts of AutoWare, showing the point cloud and, and what it's seeing from the sensors. But you know, th this is a kind of pre-recorded sensor stuff because we don't have a car here. But at least it gives you an example of you know, what we can run using the Sophie architecture and using this uh, development platform. It's quite amazing the, the ARM processors people are developing for self-driving cars and electric cars and everything. And the power they have is amazing. It just keeps getting better. Yeah. Actually, you can even swap boards out in your car to keep it updated. Yeah, so it's, so it's really interesting. When we're going into this software-defined world, okay, there are a couple of things. So firstly, what Sophie's trying to do is really um, take away the real dependence on, on a particular hardware system. So you're right, you could move from one SOC to another SOC, whatever, or, or if there's a newer version of the SOC, you could do that, okay? The other interesting part is you could over, like we did with this thing, the automakers could over-provision, okay? It's not what normally happens, because normally you build it to what the car's doing. But if you're going, well, I think I'm going to have extra functions, I'm developing those, as an automaker, and I want to maybe upsell them to, to you know, the, the consumers of my product, put a bit more compute power in there. And, and that, that will be an interesting shift in how automotive works. Yesterday I did video with, it. they were talking about 128 core uh -huh. in, the, in the car. Yeah. Like you could have the bigger yeah. SKU. So this one you could actually put 128 core in it if you wanted to. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a ComHPC module that we, we put in here. So it's uh, yeah, it's upgradable even in this development system. And uh, here it's showing the. So so this what you is talking about. Yeah, this is the architecture of Sophie. So there's there's a cloud part. This is where you kind of do your development um, using the Sophie framework in the cloud. But obviously this gets needs to get deployed into a vehicle. So there's a sort of similar view on, on, in the vehicle. So up here you basically start developing your code, you're developing in the cloud, you kind of, you can even do your testing in the cloud, you can do things like digital twins to kind of like a good, get a good representation even in the cloud of what your vehicle system looks like. 
And then what we're doing is we're using some cloud technologies like orchestration, which allows you to then deploy your different workloads, which are shown in the kind of green boxes here, down into the computer on the edge, which is what this is sort of simulating right now. And so another part that's, uh, another technology or methodology that's used in cloud is containers. So containers, again, allow you to develop these workloads, these applications in the, in the green boxes there, and then sort of seamlessly deploy them from the cloud down into the edge. I guess it's working very fast, uh, this ecosystem. Uh, people are asking for, for this right now. There's so many electric cars coming to the market right now. Many of them want to be self-driving. Yeah, so, so the, the different applications, it, it's all going to be driven by software. So you're right, there's, there's an appetite for it. So the Sophie, um, Sophie members, we're now over 70 announced members. So there's a lot of different people in the automotive ecosystem that are really getting involved with this initiative. And it's, it's yeah, it's, it's got some really good momentum. And it's because there's, there's kind of a, a need for it out there. And there's a desire to start developing software now. Even if the vehicle's not gonna be produced until whenever, I want to get my software development going early. And then I want to be able to continuously integrate and continuously deliver. Do you hear the arm booth? you have uh, more different demos talking about this? Uh, if we go around the other side, yep, we can. Uh, this is an example. Um, this is not actually running Sophie. This is just, um, this is one of our uh, SOC partners. Um, so Telechips, uh, I think this was announced today, the Dolphin 5 SOC. And so this is kind of cool because it's, you know, it's running different applications that you would see in the cockpit on a single SOC. So we've got an example of running a movie. We've got an example of sort of surround view and surround view cameras. So there's a camera here, you can see my hand. So they, they've got cameras all around this to do the surround view. And then you've got, you know, your cabin functionality over here. So it's basically showing the power and the performance of you know, this SOC, which we can see here, with our Cortex-A76. High performance. High performance. Eight nanometer. Yeah, so it, it, this, this thing's rocking. I mean, you can see this display here. This is running on this, on this SOC. It also has our Mali G78, which is a, a, a GPU, and it also has a, 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 our NPU in there as well. So this is a really good example of the different types of IP that, you know, ARM produces that can be used by our silicon partners. Um, so this, this again, this, this is showing how you can run different applications on a single compute platform. A bit like we were talking about around the other demonstration. Um, this is just showing it in a very graphical way. For a while I've been seeing such amazing ARM processors, but it's hard to see all the potential actually used in devices and a car is a great way to do that. Oh, you have absolutely. so much stuff going on, absolutely. and you want to process all of it at the same time. Yeah, and if you think about a vehicle, there are so many different systems now running in a vehicle. I mean, this is just showing what you sort of see. But yeah, this is showing your cameras around your car. You know, it's showing potential for sort of, you know, ADAS functionality, display functionality. And so, yeah, it's a really good way to see, you know, quite how performant these things are right now, and also the sort of software applications that run on them. Cool. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks for the... You're welcome. The tour.